All right, guys. Welcome to Brand Academy. Okay, my name is Brand. I'm actually Mr. Wynn's twin brother. As you can see, I'm, I'm gonna show my face here. Okay, so we look very alike. We are two very beautiful human beings. But okay, with that being said, um, today. Uh, we are talking about isosceles and equilateral triangles, okay? We are on chapter 4-6, okay? So if you guys didn't print out the notes yet, okay, please print out the notes so you can fill it in as we are going through the recording, okay? So I want you guys to focus right now on the beginning part of this lesson, okay? And uh, just a reminder, or not really a reminder, but throughout this video, I might tell you guys to pause the video, okay? So when I tell you guys to pause the video, I need you guys to pause the video, okay? And the reason for that is because there will be times where you guys will be working on the problems on your own, okay, before I give you guys the answers. So you guys know who you are, okay? When I say pause, please just pause it and try to work on the problems so you can... Uh, Work on your critical thinking skills, okay? Okay, Patrick? Okay, make sure you hit pause, okay? All right, so we're going to start here. So let's focus on the topic for today, okay? Isosceles and equilateral triangles. Okay, so in general, let's try to identify the proper parts first when we're talking about an isosceles triangle. So first things first is the legs of an isosceles triangle. Okay, they are the two congruent sides of the triangle. So let's assume these two sides here are congruent. And I'm going to label this my leg. Okay. And my vertex angle now, okay, so looking at the vertex angle, is the angle formed by the two congruent sides. So I'm just call this angle one. Okay, so the two congruent sides, right, are in red here. So the angle that we're forming, that vertex angle, is angle one. Okay. So this right here is the vertex angle. All right, so that's the vertex angle. And now the base angles, okay, the base angles are two angles formed by the base, which I will label here. The base is, of course, the bottom of that triangle that are not the two legs. Okay, and they're formed by that base and the two congruent sides. Okay, so let's call this angle two and angle three. Okay, and those will be the base angles. So let's put this in here. Okay, the vertex angle is angle one and the two base angles are angle two and angle three. Okay. So in general, okay, we know what isosceles triangles are, right? They're a triangle with at least two congruent sides. But now we're gonna be more specific and talk about them in regards to a theorem. Okay, so now we're on theorems for isosceles triangle. Okay, so of course with theorems, we know there are going to be more proofs, right? Okay, so get excited. Okay, so for isosceles triangle theorems, okay, if you guys read this here. It says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. Okay, so I'm going to label this right here. The two sides we're talking about initially is AC is congruent to BC, which is already marked there for you. So that's congruent. Then the angles opposite, right? I'm going to underline that. The angles opposite those sides are congruent. Okay, so opposite the sides, right? I'm going to draw arrows. So it's angle 2 is going to be congruent to 
angle 1. Okay, angle 1. And if you guys kind of just want to kind of recall back to our conditional statements, if you guys remember if A, then B, right? So we can just say this is our A and this is our B. Okay, so our conditional statement. If A, then B. And of course, the reason why I brought this up, because the next theorem, we're talking about the converse of an isosceles triangle. Okay, so the converse of it. And so, just to recap back, the converse is when we switch the statements. So now we have if B, then A. And so now for our case, this converse is if the two angles, right, if we're given that the two angles of a triangle are congruent, then its opposite sides are congruent. Okay, it's opposite sides. Okay, so D, E, and the opposite here. Okay, they will be congruent. Okay, so now we're adding two more theorems, right? These two theorems here. We're adding two more theorems into our toolbox. Okay, so remember that analogy I talked about, right? We have our toolbox, right? Now we're just adding more stuff into the toolbox. You guys excited? All right, it's like Christmas. All right, you guys don't have to draw that. Don't draw that. Okay, do not waste your ink. Okay, so now we're gonna be applying these two theorems okay into our proofs. But before we do that, let's actually prove one of the theorems here. We're gonna be proving the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, so remember when we're proving a theorem, we can't use that theorem in the proof itself, okay, because we're trying to prove it. So uh, let's see what we're given here. So if you guys look already, there's already step one written in there for you, okay, and it's not a given. Okay, so there's something a little bit different here, and it reads for step one, it says let N be the midpoint of MP, okay. So, I'm just going to look at MP here. MP is this segment here. Okay, I'm going to put N as that midpoint. Okay, so this is point N. Okay, and it's going to be our midpoint. And the reason for that, if you look over at the reasons, it says every segment has exactly one midpoint. Okay, so. With this here, okay, we can always do this. Okay, we can always set a point and call it the midpoint somewhere. Okay, so that's why that was step one. And for step two here, okay, step two, I'm gonna write, we are gonna draw an auxiliary line, auxiliary line L N. Okay. I'm gonna draw auxiliary line L N. So essentially I'm just gonna connect this right there. Okay. And we know we can always do that. Okay, we can create auxiliary lines for any diagram that we want. Okay, and we just did that for L N. And so the reason for that would be this is back in chapter one. Okay, and the reason for this is for every two points, there is a line. Okay, for every two points, there's a line. Okay, and that's back in chapter one. Okay, if you guys are panicking right now about these two steps, okay, because I know this is brand new, do not worry about it. Okay, we won't be doing this very often, and I will be warning you guys if this is on the test, but as of right now, it is not. Okay, so do not worry about it. And so now let's prove this. Okay, let's kind of step back here and look at what we are trying to prove. Okay, so with this given here, okay, we have triangle 
LMP, and we know LM, mark this right here, LM is congruent to LP. And our goal is to prove angle M is congruent to angle P. Okay. So let's see how we're going to do this. So step three, okay, uh, we need to start right away. Now we can start with our given. Okay, so we need to say LM is congruent to LP. And that is because of our given. Okay, so right now I want you guys to finish the rest of this proof. Okay, so right now please pause the video. Pause it, attempt it, give it a good two or three minutes. Okay, and after those two or three minutes, okay, unpause it and check the solutions. Okay, so please pause. Okay, did you guys pause it? I hope you did, or else you're cheating yourself. All right, so I'm just gonna go through the solutions pretty quickly. Okay, so before our given, right, we talked about how n is the midpoint, and with the midpoint, we will know that two segments would be congruent to each other, right? So if n is the midpoint here, I would know that mn is going to be congruent to pn. Okay, so mn is congruent to pn. And the reason for that is because of definition of a midpoint. Okay. Then uh, step five would be a classic. Okay, step five is LN is congruent to LN right here because of the reflexive property. Okay. Then step six, we can see now the triangles here are congruent. Those two triangles, triangle. PLN is congruent to triangle MLN. And this is because of what? Side, side, side congruence. And our last step, since the triangles are congruent, now we can state that angle M is congruent to angle P because of CP, CT. All right, so uh, that's a little um, proof that we just did to prove the theorem, okay? Uh, there's just two more things that we need to talk about, okay? So uh, equilateral triangles, okay? You guys probably already noticed from uh, middle school possibly, okay? But equilateral triangles, we know that one, all the sides are equal, right? The word equilateral here. Okay, equilateral, I'm gonna write right here. Okay, equilateral is all sides are congruent. And then over here, we got equiangular, okay, which means all angles are congruent. So this is stating that if you have an equilateral triangle, all the sides will be congruent. But not only that, all the angles would be congruent. Okay, so you have this image here. Okay, so if you're given an equilateral triangle, you will be given all this information. And so uh, for 4.4, theorem 4.4 here, okay, each angle of an equilateral triangle would be 60 degrees. Okay, so we see these down here. Right, and the reason for that is if we know all the angles of a triangle, right, angle D plus angle E plus angle F equals 180, right? Well, if all three angles are congruent, right, they're equal to each other, I can just call them all angle Ds. Angle D plus angle D plus angle D, you will get three angle Ds equals 180. And of course, if you divide that out, angle D would equal 60. Okay. And so that's essentially all the notes. And now we'll be heading over to examples.